Hi, uh, my name is Lauren Bennett. I am the product engineering lead for the spatial analysis and data science software development team at Esri. Um, and I've also been coordinating our efforts around analysis and modeling and um, forecasting with uh, our efforts to respond to COVID-19. Um, we have been getting asked by a lot of you to, to help in integrating um, modeling and forecasting into your existing workflows. And we've been working really hard to help you in that area. And I want to share some of the work that we've been doing, which includes um, beginning to integrate some of the really widely used models that are out there to do this kind of work. We started with a toolbox, which right now has a tool that wraps um, the University of Pennsylvania's CHIME model, which is a pretty, um, it's, a, it's a really powerful model. It's being really widely used. It's a pretty traditional um, epidemiological model called an SIR model, which is about the susceptible, infected, and um, recovered population, um, bringing those three pieces of the puzzle together to um, accurately as possible forecast um, where we're going to have needs as far as hospital beds, ICU beds, and ventilators. Um, and it's also really powerful because it helps, it also allows you to integrate um, some information about social distancing um, policies that are in place and how that might impact those projections. The most important piece of the puzzle here is data. If we've got the right data, we can make much more accurate projections. And so I know that many of you are already collecting and sharing information within the ArcGIS platform. We've all seen um, dashboards like this one, um, like the Johns Hopkins dashboard, this one from Florida, that is sharing information about cases, positive test results. And in this case, Florida is also sharing hospitalizations. And that's a really important piece of the SIR model and that CHIME model that we're going to take a look at. So we, I grabbed that data. And just for demo purposes, um, I'm using it for this example here. And this is the tool that we've built into ArcGIS. And really, this is about enabling you to take advantage of that really great science that's out there right inside of ArcGIS for the workflows that really require us to think spatially about what those results mean. So what we do is we point to our case data. And we know the underlying population. This is essentially that susceptible population part of the SIR. We also know the number that are currently hospitalized. Now, this is a really important piece because um, the model is going to take that hospital, the number of people hospitalized, as well as information we have about what the hospitalization rate is for this particular virus, and figure out from there the projected the or the um, the estimated number of the population that's infected, since really our best bet at getting at that number infected is really about how many people are hospitalized. So then we can choose the number of days to project. We can choose um, a date to start. And then we have some options about how to fill out some of these parameters. So one of the ones that's really interesting is there's this social distancing. It's the reduction in social contact based on some of the policies that we're seeing, stay-at-home orders, shelter-in-place orders. Um, and another really interesting thing that we're seeing a lot of is this great data that's out there about mobility and movement patterns. And there's a lot of opportunity to explore how we can scale our understanding of, okay, everybody's supposed to shelter in place, but everybody's not doing it either because they're not able to um, or because maybe there's some compliance issues. And so if we can analyze that spatial data and scale that social distancing number location by location based on compliance, we can incorporate that to get a better model. And then we can also have some constant parameters here, things about hospitalization rate, ICU rate, ventilated rate, how many days infectious. Um, these are other things that we could do locally. So a hospitalization rate we know is going to change location like by location based on the underlying population. And so while we have a constant here, we could fill that out as a field that we allow to vary spatially. 
Then finally, we can incorporate information about the number of beds, the number of ICU beds available, because that is going to feed into our understanding of capacity and help us do things like map capacity, understand what the demand is going to be, when we're going to go over capacity, and use that information um, to allocate our resources and really plan to respond to the situation. So one of the outputs that we get here is the peak hospitalized census. So the larger the square here, the the larger the number of people um, that is going to be hospitalized at that peak. And that's a really important variable for us to understand. That's essentially the, the demand. Now, we can also visualize this in different ways. So for instance, we've got um, as well in that summary, a maximum number of beds over capacity. So knowing what the peak's going to be is important, but we also have a certain number of beds available. And we can see the number of beds over capacity that will be, and that's really going to help us um, um, do some more planning and allocate our resources. Now, we can also, as part of this output, start to explore um, a little bit more about this model. We can start to see, for instance, this SIR chart. It gets gives us a sense of the susceptible population, the infected population, and then um, the infected population here, and then the recovered population. And so we, this is one of those kind of traditional outputs that are part of SIR models that's automatically created when you run it in inside of ArcGIS. Now, we can also use the results of this kind of analysis to do a lot of different things, including make some comparisons of various what-if scenarios. In this case, we're looking at the difference in the curve of the disease based on different social distancing um, compliance. So in the map on the right here, we're looking at what if there was no social distancing? When would we peak and how high would that peak be? And then on in the map on the left, we're looking at um, a 30% reduction in interaction, and we can see how high the peak goes and when that peak happens. And we can see this phenomenon that we are talking a lot about in the news, which is flattening the curve. We are flattening the curve, and we're able to see that because of social distancing, we get a peak that comes later and we get a peak that's much lower. And that's critical because one of the most important things to, to think about when responding to a crisis like this is how do we protect our healthcare system? How do we make sure that we are as um, close to capacity as possible so that we don't go so far over capacity that things get out of control? Um, and so flattening that curve and lengthening the amount of time that um, people are becoming infected, but slowing it down so that hospitalizations don't all happen at the same time is really critical. And we can really see that happen based on those what-if scenarios right inside of ArcGIS. And we can see also how that will change over time on the map and start to just see exactly when and where um, those overcapacities are going to happen. Now, in addition to those comparisons and understanding when and at at what level will be over capacity, we can go further. Because we're in, a, in our GIS, because we're integrating in with all of these other um, systems of information, the systems of record throughout our organization, we're able to then take this further, right? We can go on to do things like location allocation and start to think about if we understand how many beds over capacity will be in each of these locations, then we can start to plan where should we place surge sites so that we most effectively serve that demand. It's a really critical part of this process, being able to um, use the information, use the results of these models to really inform decisions. And those decisions are inherently spatial, and it's really important that we're able to make them in um, a, a really spatial way. So... We are working really hard to support your efforts, the amazing work that you're already doing to collect this critical information, to share it with the public, to disseminate it throughout the organization, and now with the introduction of, of these new tools to take that information, feed it into these models, pull information from all of these other partners, um, partners like... Um, Definitive Healthcare, who are providing a global data or a national data set for um, 
bed capacity and ICU bed capacity and ventilator capacity, as well as um, some baseline utilization information. Those are that kind of data being provided by partners within the, the ecosystem play a critical role in being able to, as accurately as possible, um, perform this modeling so that we can use it as we move forward to um, really drive decisions at this critical point that we're at where we have to act quickly. So we are here to help and um, we look forward to partnering with you as you do the, the amazing work that you'll continue to do as, to deal with this, um, this crisis. Thank you very much.